Uh, hello, I'm James Henry. I'm a full-time scriptwriter based in Penryn. Um, I've been full-time for about 10 years. Um, I started off writing Bob the Builder and Smack the Pony. Um, became full-time just after that with Green Wing, which was a uh, Channel 4 comedy show. Um, de developed various post-Green Wing things. Campus um, was one, and me and one of the Green Wing writers have just finished Delivery Man, which is an ITV sitcom, which is going out at the moment. Um, and I've written various kids' shows, uh, written for Hey Dougie and Kept Going with Bob the Builder, and an ITV thing called Cannibals, and lots of little sort of animation things, which I like, I like doing as well as comedy. So I think the inspiration is to try and write stuff that I want to see on television, which sounds a bit trite, but there's not that much stuff that I like on telly, so uh, I'm just trying to put out there stuff that I would watch myself. The inspiration, often when you start out, the inspiration is to write better than, than stuff that's out there. Um, I think the drive to keep going is to find stuff that's really good and try and write something that's as good as that, something, something that's as good as Spaced or West Wing or, you know, some of the really good bits of True Detective or something like that, and I think that's, that's what that's where you have to be later on in your career. You have to try and, and strive to get as good as the really, really good stuff. <sighs> I, want to, I want to do features. Um, I'd like to. I mean, I, I write a lot of uh, features scripts on spec, or I used to, but it's such, um, oh, such a painful world of trying to get things made original. I'm always writing original things, really doing adaptations, I guess. And most feature writing is adapting other people's stuff, which can be really, it can be great, depends on the material. Um, I just enjoy writing and coming up with my own kind of worlds and characters. So at the moment, that's easier to do in, in telly. Um, but, you know, if, if I forgot asked to do the right feature thing that I thought I'd be good at, then I'd, I'd, you know, I'd absolutely be up for that. Um, I, just, I, do, I do find telly more creatively rewarding at the moment, I think. I think it's probably more fun to be had. Um, whereas writing features is a bit high stakes high pressure and then you can be dropped at any moment. I think that's, that's really it, is that with uh, television probably strokes the ego a bit more for writers, whereas um, with features you are just a sort of cog in the system. What's my dream next step in my career? Um, I would like to have sole credits on something. So with Smack the Pony I was a team of, one of a team of about 30 writers, and Green Wing uh, one of seven, and uh, Delivery Man, one of two, so it'd be quite nice to keep that progression going and just think it is just me. I mean, telly's never just you, because there's always producers and script editors and directors, and it's always collaborative. But I would like to have something that, you know, for good or bad, is, is mine, and I've done that. So that's, hopefully that's the next step. You should have that drive to do something that is yours, that you've, you've created yourself. Um, so that's kind of, the projects I'm doing at the moment are, if they get anywhere, will be, kind of things that are very much me, so that'd be nice, that'd be nice to do. Have I had to compromise what I've written? Yeah, I mean, it's constant compromise. You always have to compromise. Um, you have to pick your battles. I mean, kids' television, you're always compromising because you have to run everything through compliance. So, um, you know, you can't have characters running across wet cement <laughs> and stuff, or you know, juggling chainsaws in Bob the Builder, which is probably fair enough. Um, but there's kind of swearing issues as well. Um, so you're, you're constantly negotiating if you have like the F word there, can you justify the C word um, a bit later on? Um, I mean, Delivery Man, we're having all sorts of quite funny stuff because there's, it, there's quite rude words being used in uh, Delivery Man. But if it's essentially, if it's in Latin and you're talking about a part of the body that medically is, is relevant to the show, that's more or less fair enough. So context is very important. You're, you're always the creative tension between you, the other writer, and the director, and ITV, and that's just that's just how it goes. I think it's just it's always compromise. With Deliveryman, ITV have been fantastic. They've been very kind of willing to, to sort of compromise and you know let's have our way with most things. Um, so you, you're never writing in a vacuum. You're always taking notes from development people uh, or actors as well. Actors might have their own takes on on lines and on characters and stuff, which is is always valid, there's always that level of uh, working out how much to push your own ideas and how much to sort of fit in with people around you and um, it's, it is, it's difficult but it's sometimes that's where kind of the fun is as well, it's trying to uh, trying to negotiate someone else's boundaries and just kind of push what you want to, want to do as well. Have I ever been asked to compromise on something and refused to compromise? Um, I'm not sure that I have, to be honest. I've never had to compromise on anything massive, normally because you, you sort of establish the ground rules before you write it. You know, if you know what time of day or night this thing's going out, and you know what kind of tone people are expecting, 
then you just work quite hard to keep within those boundaries. It's quite often uh, unsuitable language. Can we can we have that line with a bit less sweary? Um, or or people will say, I'm not that scene just isn't. Can we compromise on not having that scene because it's not very funny? In which case, you know, it hasn't done its job, so I'm quite happy to, to lose that scene. But I think I've always been quite good at knowing what they were after in the first place. Um, but then I've always, again, I've mostly worked as part of a team as well, so maybe I just haven't had to make those big creative decisions. But often you're compromising on budget. I mean, someone says we haven't got the money to do such and such a thing. There's often not a great deal you can do about it. I quite like being told stuff like that because then you have to be imaginative and find a way of making it work. It's more or less constant compromise, I guess. Uh, but I don't really mind that. That's fine. It's part of the job. Could I do more serious drama for the rest of my career? Um, I, I would like to balance it out with comedy, I think. Because um, even when, I, when I'm writing drama, I quite like to sneak some funny bits in under the line. But I guess that's writing, it's like Paul Abbott's talking about, he doesn't really write comedy, he writes drama that is quite funny. So if I was, when I write drama, I still would like it to be quite funny and quite have some, because characters do have a sense of humour. I mean, most people have a, you know, everyone thinks they've got a sense of humour. But if nothing else, when you drop away the humour, uh, the serious bits feel so much more serious. So, you know, you can sort of slide things up and down a little bit. Being based in Cornwall is a bit of a challenge. It's not such a big deal with drama, because if you're writing a drama project, you really just meet with the producers every two or three months or something. Comedy is much more organic. Um, and I've had to turn down a couple of jobs recently because I'd need to be up in London the whole time to be available for the, the process of improvisation. What I tend to do is go up to London about twice a month. Twice a month I'll go up to London on the sleeper, um, pack in two days and come back on the sleeper again. Um, so it's quite intensive, but it's nice. I think it works really well because I think I have a, a slightly more distinctive voice from not being in London. But in a weird way, it, it has a sort of artificial scarcity. So my agent can say, James is in town for in London for, for some meetings, so you have to rush and, you know, if you want to meet James, you have to do it now on this day. So that's quite good. Uh, people know they can't just get you up at half an hour's notice. That's kind of makes you slightly more valuable, I think. You know, I know the way people speak down here. Um, and I know the locations, and I know the sort of um, conflicts, and I can write more confidently about, you know, being down here. Which not many people can. I think most people write about West Country and Cornwall sort of outside its perspective, or a romanticised perspective. It, um, it does close down some pathways, I guess. It's very hard. I wouldn't be able to show run something in London without actually moving there. Do I have a screenwriting bucket list? I started out, I had a plan, a five-point plan. One, one, write something. Two, get paid for writing something. Three was get something published. Four was make a living as a writer. Five was make a lot of money as a writer, be very, very successful. So uh, I've got as far as four. <laughs> People I look up to within the industry, Victoria Pyle, who I've worked with from the beginning already, who, she's just fantastic and very uh, dedicated to making just good, intelligent comedy um, and just battles broadcasters the whole time to get her own way. It's great. It's quite inspiring. Armando Iannucci, he uses a lot of people from kids' telly as well. He, if he likes someone thinks they're good, he will use them. Joss Whedon, obviously, because you have to say that. You have to say that. He's great. Graham Yost, who uh, was the producer of Justified, he seems very cool. He also wrote the original script of Speed, I found it the other day, which is such a great script. Pendleton Ward, who came up with Adventure Time and Bravest Warriors, He's, he seems like an interesting chap. They just seem nice and they seem like they do a good job. Um, they are quite gently inspiring in their own way. I listen to Nerdist Writers Podcast, that's very good, which is screenwriters uh, just talking about their, uh, talking about the job. Work that defined me if I died tomorrow. Um, oh God, what a, what a thought. Um, <laughs> one seventh of the writing team on Green Wing is probably what would define me. The thing is you're constantly working on so many projects and you never know which one will be on screen. Like the drama thing that I'm developing at the moment just feels like the biggest thing to me in the world. Um, it'll be amazing and I'm going to see it in my head and I think it'll be out there. I think the, the comedy stuff has been the most most successful I guess. Um, it's quite nice. It's quite nice to be a comedy writer. I think what's nice is that looking at my CV it has got a thread running through it of it's got Smack the Pony, Green Wing, Canvas and Delivery Man and I think there's a nice kind of consistency in that. Um, you can see all those shows kind of fitting together. So uh, maybe a tiny DVD box set those things 